All right, hey, Mr. Wad. Hey, Mr. Baldwin. Uh, ready to talk about chemical weathering? Sure, why not? Sweet. So all, all right. we're doing is identifying the agents involved in chemical and physical weathering. We just talked about physical. Yeah. Now we're doing chemical. Okay, good. So we'll start off with the definition of chemical weathering. Perfect. And chemical weathering are processes that break down rock components and the internal structures of the minerals that make them up so that the chemistry or the composition of the rock is altered, meaning we make a new substance, just like in chemistry one when you learned about chemical changes, mm -hmm. chemical weathering is a chemical change. So it's things like dissolution, oxidation, and hydrolysis. Great. Let's, Let's get into it. Talk about those things. Last time too. There we go. All right. So first we got to talk about water. The, like Basically a lot of these weathering agents all have to do with water. Yeah. Like without water, we wouldn't really have any of this weathering take place. Right. Um, and so water, it's a really cool molecule. Um, it's polar, meaning it's got like a positive and a negative side. Okay. Um, and the positive side is going to be on the side with those hydrogen atoms, mm -hmm. and the negative side is going to be on the side with that oxygen atom. Okay. So it kind of looks like Mickey Mouse, right, with the two positives, the mm -hmm. hydrogens being the ears, and then the oxygen kind of being Mickey Mouse's face. Yeah, yeah. perfect. What, it always reminds me of the Mickey Mouse hat <laughs> for some reason. Perfect. Okay, so... The polar molecule, and that's going to have an impact on what we're going to do here next, which is look at how water is actually the universal solvent mm -hmm. because it dissolves a lot of things because of that polar nature. So the example we're looking at here is salt, which if you think about the structure, it's just alternating sodium and chlorine and sodium and chlorine in all directions. Yeah. Saying that over again. Okay, so the sodium is the little blue positive metal here. Mm -hmm. And the chlorine is the big green negative, or the anion here. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen then is that the positive side of the water, so the hydrogens, are going to go and grab at the negative, mm -hmm. so the chlorine. And the negative, the oxygen, is going to pull at the positive, the yeah, cation. Because they always say opposites attract. So if you look at the water here, like all the positive, so Mickey's ears are mm -hmm. pointed towards that negative. Yep. And then Mickey's face got broken away from his ears. Um, oh, sorry, Mickey's face is pointing towards the positive cation there. Right. So essentially, what it's doing is it's pulling apart the ionically bonded positive and negative sodium and chlorine mm -hmm. because of its polar nature. Okay. And so this actually has a lot to do with uh, how we get acid rain, doesn't it? Okay. Acid rain or acid precipitation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to pause the video, there's actually a video within the video um, where you can watch and see kind of how acid rain is developed. Yeah, how it forms, what it forms from, and then how it starts to impact plants and trees and what kind of damage we see, what kind of impact we see in the plants and the trees and then eventually in the soil as well, right? Okay. Okay, so jump out, watch this video, and then come back and join us. Okay. Riveting video. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, I think that's a student that made that video that's, you know, just like our students. So mm -hmm. you can make those videos too. Mm -hmm. um, so what we end up getting is what they talked about a little in the video is how acid rain forms. So like when we look at air pollution, so mm -hmm. like the tailpipe of our car sure. gives off a lot of that exhaust and that mixes into the air and that starts dissolving and getting the rainwater slightly acidic. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually cars, it's any of the vehicles that are out there on the road, mm -hmm. it's the factories, light or heavy industry, mm -hmm. it's also the chimneys on our houses, mm -hmm. so anything that's putting out carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, any of the carbon, sulfur, nitrogen compounds that are going up into the air mm -hmm. are going to combine with water. Mm -hmm. And they're going to end up making the sulfuric acid, the nitric acid, the carbonic acid mm -hmm. that then comes down in acid precipitation. So it could be rain, it could be snow, it could be fog, any of those kinds of acid precipitation. That's the deposition part of the acid rain, right? And so what does that then impact? So like I always think acid rain, it's going to like burn through my jacket or something, but it doesn't really happen like that. Um, oh, and actually before we can go to there, um, just some of the places where acid rain is an issue, mm -hmm. um, you definitely see much further towards the east. Uh, the east coast of America, we get a lot more acid rain. Yeah. Uh, we're talking acidities of almost down to three, which is really acidic. Uh, and rainwater naturally is a slightly acidic. Mm -hmm. It's usually about five to six, but we're starting to get inching towards that three on the east coast. Okay, so remembering that the neutral value is seven, mm -hmm. and above seven is 
basic. Basic, and below seven is acidic. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the change in acid acidity from west to east here. Okay. So now we're on to the impacts of acid rain on soils and trees we're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, if you look on the graphic on the left, uh, it shows what happens when rain, uh, slightly acidic rain, new, or rain that's about 5.6, mm -hmm. uh, when it falls, a lot of the nutrients, so like calcium and potassium, you can see that they're called leached, mm -hmm. are leached down uh, through the soil column. But then some of the stuff isn't always go, doesn't always go down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So like aluminum and hydrogen stays there. It stays in the soil where the plants take it up through its roots. Okay. So what's happening there is the acid in the water that's soaking into the ground is mm -hmm. actually dissolving the calcium and the potassium that's in the soil, mm -hmm. part of the soil. So in that case, it's pushing it down into the lower, leaching it down mm -hmm. under the force of gravity into the lower layers of the soil. Mm -hmm. So that's when the the pH of the rain was about 5.6, and mm -hmm. now about 100 years later, we've got pHs more in the range of upper threes to five, and now we're seeing a different situation where we're seeing the aluminum and the hydrogen and other metals being leached out of the soil and down into the lower levels where it might get carried away then by some groundwater. Yeah, and later on. And those vital nutrients then aren't available for the trees anymore. Mm -hmm. So we're having a lot of trees that aren't really doing too well because of it. So we're seeing things like smaller leaves, fewer leaves, mm -hmm. fewer seeds being produced, seedlings not being able to grow to maturity. And they're not as, forests. not as resistant to bugs and pests mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, so this is uh, uh, really a bad problem with conifer trees. Um, especially like the unhealthy ones, the older ones, and the seedlings aren't able to get in those nutrients that they would normally be able to get in with normal uh, pH rainwater. So then they are more susceptible to things like the wind, storms, mm -hmm. snowstorms, and they're not going to come back as readily from those exactly. things. Exactly, and it's all right. from that dissolution that we were talking yep. about. Okay, so another type of chemical weathering is called hydrolysis. Mm -hmm. So hydro, water, water the lysis part is loosening. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we're talking about decomposition of substances, so earth materials, with water. Okay. So what happens in that? Well, what ends up happening is, like the example we give is the feldspar and granites. Mm -hmm. um, feldspar, when it takes in water, it kind of soaks it into its chemical composition, into its structure. Mm -hmm. And it transforms it into clay. So actually, pretty much all the clays that we have on our soil are from the breaking down of feldspar changing into clay. Okay. So if we think about the granite being primarily feldspar mm -hmm. and quartz mm -hmm. and maybe a couple other things, but mm -hmm. let's think about the majority of it being the feldspar and the quartz. If the feldspar is broken down into clay, mm -hmm. then you're left with quartz grains, and those are going to weather mechanically, mm -hmm. right? They're going to tumble down a stream, and they're going to turn into sand. Mm -hmm. So beach sand, sand in streams, sand out there that we might want to put our feet into in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So that's what happens with granite. It's partially weathered mechanically and partially weathered through the hydrolysis of the feldspars into clay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Next one, this is one we're all familiar with, oxidation. This yeah. one, I mean, you leave your bike outside, what happens? It rusts. Yeah. Okay, so actually what's happening is you're losing electrons, okay? So you're taking electrons from your, in this case, iron, uh, and you're losing it to oxygen, mm -hmm. okay? So it ends up making an iron oxide, which is that rusty material. Mm -hmm. And it's not just iron that rusts, right? Mm -hmm. You could find outside on the outside part of the school, you can find some copper standpipes, mm -hmm. and you see they have that beautiful patina, the green color on them, mm -hmm. just like the Statue of Liberty, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the rusted copper. Yeah, and copper started as like a copper color, and as it rusts, it turns to green. It turns to green. Right. Good. All right, so the big difference, a lot of kids get kind of confused with this, between mechanical and chemical weathering, yeah. um, mainly the it's in the final product. Okay. So like chemical weathering, you end up changing substances. Okay, so we started with feldspar as we ended with clays. Mm -hmm. okay? But with mechanical weathering, so like with the quartz, we just started with a bigger piece of quartz and ended with a smaller piece of quartz. Okay. So think back to chemical and physical changes. Mm -hmm. The physical changes, mechanical weathering in this case, breaks things down into smaller pieces and increases the surface area, which we're going to talk about a little bit in the next video. Mm -hmm. And the chemical weathering, just like a chemical change, there's a new substance that's created that has a different chemical composition, either by water breaking it apart or water attaching to it, oxygen attaching to it, one of those ways. Good.
Perfect. I think so that's I think it that's for us. So I think that's time to go out and go to your class webpage and grab your quiz, and we'll see you in class tomorrow. See you guys. Bye, guys.